Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. My name is Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Jose Trujillo. Jose asks, can you make a video on metering modes? Well, you bet. We're going to make several episodes on metering. In fact, we're going to talk about using a light meter like this one in a future episode. We'll be talking about some advanced metering tricks in the studio. We'll also be talking about exposure compensation. But we're going to start with the basics, which is TTL metering. Now, TTL means through the lens. Now, we all know that our cameras have a built-in light meter. And this light meter tells our camera how to set the aperture and shutter speed but how does that work? Well, TTL metering is reflective light metering. So what's happening is light comes from a source, the sun or a light inside your house or something, and it reflects off of your subject. And then that comes through the lens and into our camera where there's a little light meter in there that measures all of this. Now what's happening is that little uh, light meter inside is looking for 18% gray, which is uh, sort of like this gray card. It's looking for a middle gray actually. So it takes all of those luminance values, all the brights and darks, and it puts them into a blender to get this middle gray. Now this can change on the metering mode of your camera because your camera is collecting different sets of data to figure out what to mix up to get this middle gray. So let's look at these metering modes. Now our first metering mode we're going to be talking about um, is called spot metering. So if you look really closely, there's a little red dot on this house here, and that's to sort of simulate what spot metering does. It's a little uh, area in your camera that says, I only want to take about 1 to 5% of the scene usually right in the center, and use that. Take those luminance values, those brights and darks, and figure out uh, what middle gray would be on that if you averaged all of that out. Now some cameras will allow you to change this uh, based on your autofocus point, so you can move that spot around to be a little bit more accurate. Most cameras don't allow you to do that. Now spot metering mode is used when you really want to focus on one specific area in your scene to say, you know what, I want to make sure this is metered correctly, and once I have that base uh, set correctly, uh, I'll make, figure out everything else on my own. So spot metering is more of an advanced metering, metering mode. A lot of people use it for the zone system. And we'll be talking about that when we're talking about advanced metering uh, in a few episodes from now. Well, partial metering is similar to that. Partial metering takes a much larger area of the scene, usually about 10 to 15% of the scene. So it's like spot metering, but it takes a little bit more into account. So it's a little bit more forgiving. Again, this is used if you really want to say, you know what, I just want to make sure that uh, maybe a person's face is metered correctly, or maybe this uh, waterfall or something that in my scene is metered exactly right, and who cares about the rest? This is really good if you have something that's really bright in maybe a part of the scene that you want to ignore when you're metering, like maybe a bright sun. Well, there's another metering mode that's been around for ages, and it's called average metering. And it takes the entire scene and it throws it into that blender for middle gray, and what it does is it tends to get things, well, wrong. Because if, let's say you have a, uh, a, the sun in your scene, and it's just up in the corner, well, it gets just as much uh, mixed into that middle gray as all the rest of the scene, so maybe your scene will be underexposed a little bit, or maybe you have a really dark area in your scene, well, that will throw everything off as well. So what happened is camera manufacturers knew that this average metering wasn't great for everybody because a lot of people didn't understand how it was working. So they created something that was a little bit better and it's called center weighted average metering. Now center weighted metering takes about 60% or maybe 80% of the scene and it sort of feathers out as it goes. And it's mainly in the min middle of the scene, that's why it's called center weighted, and it uses that area to determine exposure. Now, this worked a lot better than the average metering because what's happening is a lot of people would uh, point their cameras at their friends and family and they would put them right in the middle of the scene. And so this assumed that that's what most people were going to be doing. Now, advanced photographers knew this was happening, so they uh, devised a lot of ways to use this, sort of like uh, partial metering or spot metering, to figure out which parts of the scenes they wanted to measure. And they got really, really good at this. And so this is still on a lot of cameras because people that knew how to do this want to go back to this and use it a lot. 
Well, there's a newer way to meter light, and this has been around for a few years, uh, and it uses uh, all of the processing power of newer digital cameras and cameras that have some computing power. And this is called matrix or evaluative metering. Sometimes it's called pattern metering. What it does is it breaks your scene up into different zones or smaller sections. And then your camera uses these zones to evaluate your scene. It throws it into this really secret algorithm that different ma camera manufacturers have created. And those create a much more intelligent exposures. Because maybe one of the zones has the sun in it and the, the rest of the zone has uh, maybe a, a beach scene or something. And it can go, aha, we know what this is. Let's ignore this really bright area and use these other areas to make sure that we meter correctly. So I highly recommend, if you're just starting out and understanding how to meter things, use matrix or evaluative metering because it's the best mode to use because it's the most advanced and the latest. It's really what I recommend. Well, to demonstrate all of these different modes, what I've done is I've taken a bunch of shots of my METS hat with several different cameras using several different metering modes. And I've posted these to the Adorama Flickr page as well as the Adorama Learning Center. So you can look at these to see how different metering affects the exact same scene, as well as how different camera manufacturers look at the scene and expose just a little bit differently. Now, because your camera is trying to average everything to middle gray, it can make some mistakes. In fact, very dark scenes, like uh, let's say a bunch of guys in black tuxedos at a wedding, well, that can be overexposed. The reason for that is your camera is looking at all that black and it doesn't expect it to be black. It expects it to be gray, so it goes from black and it takes it up to middle gray, which means that it is overexposed. And very light scenes, so scenes like uh, maybe snow-covered fields or a wedding dress that's very predominant in your scene, well, it can be underexposed because, again, your camera is looking at all that white and it doesn't expect it to be white. It expects it to average out to middle gray. So it's taking it down to middle gray or underexposing that. Well, you can fix this by using an incident light meter like this one, or you can use exposure compensation on your camera. In fact, make sure you tune in next week because I'll be taking photos of very dark scenes and very white scenes to show you how your metering can be fooled and how you can fix it using exposure compensation. Well, thanks for joining me this week. For more on metering and metering modes, make sure you visit the Adorama Learning Center and remember to send your questions to askmark at adorama.com. I'll see you next week where we continue our talk about metering and show you how to use exposure compensation. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.